Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham Insurance and Financial Services. This show focuses on sharing good news and powering the good in our community. Now here's your host, City Current CEO, Jeremy Park. Welcome to the City Current Show, powered by Hagen Botham. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference and powering the good. And we love talking about the power of literacy. In this case, we're talking about Nashville Adult Literacy Council. We're joined by their CEO, Kim Karish. How are you doing? Just great, Jeremy. Thanks so much for having us on. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. When you talk about the power of literacy, there's a lot to unpack. And I think for most of us, we take for granted the fact that uh, it's much more than just reading words. It's being able to order off a menu and fulfill like your job. Like there's so much that goes into this. And so let's start though with a little bit of backstory, a little bit of history for Nashville Adult Literacy Council. Give us some history. Yeah, we've been around since 1982. And we started with just a handful of volunteers who were helping a few folks learn how to read and write. And Nashville has changed so much over the course of the past 40 years that we've been around. But around 2000, about 2% of our population was foreign born. And now that's up to 13%. So we've expanded the kinds of services that we offer to include English speaking skills as well. And Jeremy, you kind of mentioned about the, the power of literacy. And when you really think about it, literacy is how we understand and make sense of the world around us, but it's also how we're understood in the world. So reading, writing, speaking, and listening, they're they're essential, but they're also these remarkable acts of human connection that truly transform the way that your life looks. Talk about low literacy, kind of define low literacy, because it's cool in terms of where you focus your areas. So talk about low literacy. Yeah, so um, it's shocking for people to learn that one in five Nashville adults score at the lowest level of literacy. So that means maybe they can fill out a a short form or put together some short text, but drawing conclusions, tying together um, multiple thoughts and and putting that into, um, you know, a bigger concept is difficult for them. And that's where we come in and help. And so talk about the process, talk about how it works, because as you mentioned, Nashville is evolving, the needs are evolving, which means you're evolving. And then when you talk about two stepping in and working on the low literacy, but also lifting, you're doing that through online and one-on-one. And so go ahead and talk about how the magic works. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to. Um, So a couple of things. One, we do have some online classes. We transformed the way we delivered every one of our services during the pandemic. And we're just thrilled to find that it actually works better now than what we were doing before. Our attendance is through the roof and people are really connecting and achieving their goals. And that's one thing that I think is really important and also really special about the Nashville Adult Literacy Council. I don't say to you as a learner, hey, this is what I want you to achieve. I want you to get this high school equivalency, or I need you to enroll in college, and then you'll be a success. Instead, I ask, why are you here? What is it that you want to achieve, and how can we help you do that? Because literacy is never the goal, right? Literacy is what you need in order to get the other things that you want out of life. And we find that very frequently, as you mentioned earlier, it's about navigating day-to-day life, being able to read a prescription bottle, being able to talk to a doctor in English, being able to order food online. That was a huge goal that people were setting during the pandemic because it was the only way to do that ordering now. You couldn't go in and just point to something on a menu. And so um, I love that about NALC is that 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 real personalization to say we're here to help you do what you want to do in life and it's especially powerful for the parents that come in who are trying to support their kids in school um the connection between those two things is just huge absolutely talk about statistics what are the stats that you track what are the things that warm your heart when you look at you know number of adults their proficiency increases like what are the things that you look at to track against for success 
Yeah, we look at a few things. There are things that are sort of indicators because there's a great deal of research around the number of hours of instruction that it takes. So regardless of, you know, any standardized tests, I will tell you this, I've never once had a learner come in and say, I want to achieve a measurable skill gain on a standardized test. <laughs> that is not why people are coming to us. They're coming to us because there's something in their life that they want to achieve. So we're tracking attendance hours. We do test um, to, to show indication, but we also track personal goals goal setting. And that's where you asked about the heartwarming pieces of it. That's where I just get overwhelmed and actually truly emotional about the work that we're doing because you can see families being transformed right before your very eyes. And it's funny, I um, started as a volunteer at NALC and just last night, the student that I used to tutor texted me to say, hey, friend, I haven't heard from you in a while. I hope you're doing okay. And um, we, we just texted back and forth, like we're friends for life. And um, what a special relationship that is. She and her husband had a sixth grade education from their country. And I was so honored to be invited to their oldest son's high school graduation. And he's in college now. And so you get to be this witness at this precipice for these individual families. And you know, this is a tipping point. Like this family is going to be different and transformed from this point forward. And it's humbling to be a part of that. It's all inspiring. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to get to do. Carry that into your ability to see like, I think with a lot of this, like you have a cool vantage point where you can see these individuals are like ambitious and hungry to to do more, to learn, to grow, to feed their families. They're smart. I think a lot of times, you know, society discounts like how smart they, you know, might speak another language coming in, but like they, they're curious, they're great learners, they're hard workers. Like talk about it from that perspective of kind of what you're talking about, digging a little deeper on just how really ambitious and smart and you know the the potential for great things is right there it's just a matter of you kind of chipping away at the diamond to make them shine yeah we're we're seeing that from both angles so we serve two very distinct different populations so there are people who were raised here in the united states who never learned how to read and write and then the um, English language learners who are coming from uh, various different countries. And um, you asked me about some of the stats. I think this year we're at 56 different countries and 39 different languages represented through the work that we do at the National Adult Literacy Council. And, and, and one of our core values as an agency is that we are all lifelong learners. And when you have someone who's in their 60s and they're coming to learn how to read and write for the first time in their lives, and you watch the diligence that that takes, boy, does that teach you something about yourself and how we all have a responsibility to keep on learning in this lifetime. And an example of that, uh, there was a man last year who read his first book in his life. And he commented that he said he felt whole for the first time. And it changed the way he talked to people in the break room at work. It changed the way that he carried himself. It changed the way that he valued himself because now he'd read a book like other people had. And so that confidence is something that, um, gosh, everybody deserves access to that. Don't you think? It's just, it's really an important part of this human experience. Absolutely. And I'm glad you touch on that. And, and also too, for you, I'm glad you shared the story of you starting as a volunteer. So Talk about your team, talk about volunteers, because you can just feel like the love and the respect and the passion for what you do. So talk about your team and your volunteers. Um, our team is awesome. We have an incredible group. I, I get asked all the time, like, do you have to have teaching experience to be a volunteer? And the answer is no, not at all. We're going to equip you with all the tools that you need. My team does great trainings on, on, on stuff like that. And then what you really need is just some patience. You need to be an encourager. Uh, you need to uh, be willing to connect with this with this human in front of you. And I have to say, and I understand I may be biased in this, but I think it is one of the most valuable volunteer experiences that you can have here in Nashville because all volunteering is important. You know, we need to fill the food boxes. We need to be um, getting supplies out into our communities and cleaning up after 
tornadoes and all of those things are so important. But this one, you get to know somebody. And like I said, you know, the person that I uh, volunteered with, it's been more than seven years and she texted me just last night. <laughs> and so um, what I love about it is that um, volunteers come with their own needs. It's not just the students who are showing up with needs, but volunteers have needs too. They have needs for connection. They have needs for um, purpose and a way to give back to the community. And so when I watch these two people work together, what I'm seeing is two people filling each other up. It's not that I have something that I'm giving to you, but we're both getting something and there's an equality to that that I think is just um, beautiful. I, I can't think of a better word. It's just really beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I'm even thinking I, I spoke to a whole classroom of college students about purpose and getting plugged in and making a difference. And, you know, so many, so many of them were asking, well, where do I start? How do I, you know, get involved? And I'm thinking, you know, there's so many ways just like this where you can really help lift the community and help create these amazing relationships. And at the same time, you know, find your own purpose and, and fuel your fire to give back and even know more about yourself. So talk about some of those specifics for volunteers in terms of, age, you know, time, you know, in terms of how much time to allocate, where they can plug in. So dive in a little deeper on the volunteers. Yeah, sure. So um, we work with adults. So everyone is 18 or older. Um, from a time commitment, we ask for a three month commitment. And it's usually a couple of hours a week. There are two training sessions that you'll go through um, that are an hour or two long. And then we just ask that, yeah, you commit for three months. And then at the end of that three months, if you've hit it off, as I did <laughs> with the person I was working with, you can extend that. She and I ended up working together for like a year and a half. <laughs> we, we just really enjoyed that relationship. And so um, we see people, honestly, there are people who've been working together for 10 or 15 years even, because there's always another goal to achieve and um, they just keep staying together. So it's a, it's a pretty cool experience. When you look at your role as CEO, what are some of the goals for the rest of the year with 2024 and beyond? We have to grow. Um, when I start saying things like one in five Nashville adults, it's 22% is the actual percentage of Nashville adults are at the lowest level of literacy. That equates to 120,000 people walking around the city who could benefit from the services that we offer at NALC. Right now, I'm serving 400 to 500 people a year, and we're barely making a dent in it. And the word of mouth is out. People asking, you know, how do you recruit learners? And I'm like, I don't have to recruit the learners. They keep coming to us. I have more than 600 people on my wait list right now. And that has to change. That keeps me up at night to know that they're going to be waiting six months to a year before they can get services that they need to improve their lives and to, to have the life that they want. So one of our primary goals is to get more people engaged. There's no one agency that can do this all by themselves. We need more employers, more government, more individuals to come to this table and say, yeah, I want to help with this because this is important. And listen, anything it is that you want to impact, whether it's an environmental cause, if it's poverty levels, if it's the education level of our kids, any of those things is impacted by adult literacy. So investing in a service like this is a dollar that gets multiplied throughout our community. Well, let's talk about how the community can support your efforts and help. So talk about obviously the financial contributions, the volunteerism as we've covered, but how can the community help your efforts? Yeah, um, come check us out, first of all. Yeah, reach out to us. You can learn more at NashvilleLiteracy.org. You can email us at info at NashvilleLiteracy.org. You can pick up the phone and call us at 615-298-8060. We'll be happy to walk you through the process and show you some ways to get engaged. When you look at the growth and the opportunity, as you mentioned, you've got so many on a waiting list to be able to support them. Talk about what it's going to take to be able to open up the capacity, because obviously financial contributions, more volunteers. So all of this plays a very important role in you fulfilling that mission, but being able to really make an impact with the, you know, the number of individuals who are seeking your services. So talk about that gap and what it's going to take to close that gap. You know, it's so interesting. Um, for me, um, my own experience in coming here. So I, I mentioned to you before the interview that I have a broadcast journalism degree. So that was my first job. And then I became a government spokesperson. I did that for six years. And then I started working in um, corporate healthcare and I started learning more about IT systems. And I was like, man, I don't know if this resume is really making a lot of sense until I got to NALC. 
in like the first week, they said, I, you know, our data management system is down. And I said, oh, gosh, I, what day last week did that go down was sort of the thought in my head. But I asked, how long has it been down? And they said, six years. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is why I worked in healthcare IT for a while. We've got to build data management systems. And, you know, we've got to talk to our legislators and get them involved. And we've got to be able to communicate in, in interviews like this so that people can um, find ways to get connected. And it just felt like the previous 20 years of my life had been training me to be in this role. And so this isn't always the most fun to talk about, but um, improving our systems. Um, we improved a, a form this year where it goes directly into our Salesforce management system instead of going into a Google sheet and then having to be imported. Like that's saving us 20 minutes here and 20 minutes there. But over the course of the year, it's months and months of an, a full-time employee. And so that's the work we've been doing is really improving our infrastructure. And now I think we need to you know, have a real business mindset uh, so that we can look for scalable ways to, to grow this program. Well, you mentioned it before, but you never can say it enough in the world of media. So mention again, website, phone number, where do we go to learn more and get involved? NashvilleLiteracy.org, and we will welcome you with open arms, and we would love to, to have you come and check us out. Uh, you can also email us at info at NashvilleLiteracy.org, and finally, you can always pick up the phone and give us a call, 615-298-8060. Well, Kim, thank you for all you and your amazing team do to power the good. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure, Jeremy. Thanks so much. Higginbotham Insurance and Financial Services is proud to power the City Current Show. We're a people-first company that protects what matters most, the families, businesses, and trailblazers that keep our community going. As one of the nation's top independent insurance firms, Higginbotham is a single source solution for business insurance, employee benefits, HR services, and personal insurance that's customized for you. We're here to serve you, the people you care about, and your community. Call 866-377-1959 or visit Higginbotham.com.